Welcome viewers in our learning for knowledge channel. Today we will discuss the drinking water quality parameters and explain these parameters so you can understand the importance of these impurities and what are the required and what are not required in the water. So please see this video and comment for the improvement of our content. So now we will move towards our content. So first of all, we will discuss the purpose of water treatment. Why we are using reverse osmosis, pre-treatment and other treatment programs. So what is the what are the purposes for treatment of water? So to understand this now imagine that natural water, whether rainwater or not, can contain a number of substances called impurities. Now when a particular impurity is constituent can affect the quality or health of the water user whether this is human beings or industrial system like boilers or cooling systems it is called a contaminant or pollutant. So prevent these contaminations from entering in water and to provide water that is safe for humans or industrial equipments pleasant and acceptable to the users is the purpose of water treatment. So what we want to achieve from water treatment is a water which is safe for use in specific environment. Whether human beings are using this water as a drinking water or water is consumed in the industrial systems like boilers, like cooling systems. So what are the things required in that water or not, the water treatment programs revolve around this aim. So reverse osmosis is basically a very important equipment. We already described many things about reverse osmosis. So before further proceeding and learning about reverse osmosis, it is important to look the water quality of these things. So water quality parameters. Now, in journal, the water quality parameters are divided in three parts. Number one, physical. Number two, chemical. And number three, microbial or microbiological. So, in physical, we will discuss that what is turbidity and sediments or colors in chemical, inorganic materials, organic materials. And in microbial, there are bacteria heterotropic plate, count bacteria or coliform bacteria or viruses and algal etc. So we will now explain these one by one. So basically, first of all, physical pollutants, substance contributing to color and order in water systems are referred to as physical pollutants. Natural waters contain suspended particulates that increase turbidity, impart apparent color and interfere with light penetration or the water that is aesthetically pure and pleasant is generally approved for portable purposes. So clear odorless and colorless water does not imply that it is free from other contaminants such as chemical pollutants and microorganisms. So first of all and very important in taste and color. Water can be colored. In fact, color is basically considered as an aesthetic quality of water and has no direct health impact. Many of the colors associated with water are not true color, but the results of colloidal suspension. True colors is the result of dissolved chemicals. And due to these suspended particles, there are other important property called turbidity. How we can define as turbidity? Turbidity is caused by the presence of suspended matter or in plain English turbidity is a measure of light transmitting properties of water. That how much light is passed and how much stopped. Basically if more light passes it is less turbid and if more light stops in water it is called more turbid. And this is not due to dissolved things, but this is due to suspended or colloidal things. So natural water that is very clear allow one to see images at considerable depths. High turbidity water appears as 
cloudy so these are the very this is the important reason that when turbidity is high its treatment is required because we need to remove the things which are basically suspended and uh, you know reduce its uh, transparency and what is chemical pollutants there are different type of chemical pollutants present in the water either naturally occurring or induced due to human and environment activities the like store source and storage ge ge geographical region and possible contamination sites that from where water is coming if it's coming from the uh, area where sulfur is high maybe the compound of sulfur are present if salt is present it may be higher in sodium or chloride if left untreated chemical contaminants pose a great threat to humans and therefore they must be identified and treated appropriately so chemical pollutants may be present in the form of inorganic organic and radioactive contaminants so most of the chemical pollutants when present at a concentration above the permissible limit laid down by water water authorities like who world health organization or other forums like european quality control system and other countries quality uh, departments then if water water has impurities higher than those limits it may be health hazard for human beings first of all organic matter the organic compounds contain in the element carbon and are derived from material that was once alive that is plants and animal so organic compounds include fats dyes soaps and rubber particles and woods etc and organic compounds in water are usually large non polar molecule they do not dissolve well in water are very little organic compound are dissolved in water they often provide large amounts of energy to animals and microorganisms and inorganic matter are carbon free and not derived from living matter and easily dissolved in water so inorganic matter is the mineral origin and include acid base it salts metal etc so among these we categorize metals metal are constituents or impurities often carried by water at normal levels most metals are not harmful but some metals are toxic to humans animals and microorganisms so most metal enter water as a part of compound that ionize to release the metal as a positive ion so one of the important parameter on the basis of that water use of water is recommended or not recommended is ph which is the most important water quality parameter it is defined as as all of you know the negative logarithm of hydrogen ion concentration pure water is tested neutral with a ph close to 7 at 25 degree c normal rainfall has a ph approximately 5 by 6 which is slightly acidic so the safe range for drinking water is recommended from 6.5 to 8.5 for living organism excessive high and low ph are detrimental for the use of water it is detrimental not only for humans but also for the distribution system a high ph makes the taste bitter and low ph water will corrode or dissolve metal and other substances and other parameter is hardness hardness may be considered a physical or chemical parameter of water it represents that total concentration of calcium and magnesium ions present in the water hardness basically causes the soaps and detergents to be less effective and contributes to scale formation in pipes and boilers so whether if more, uh, water is more hard so it's used not not good for human being as well as industrial systems so hardness is not considered as a health hazard but however water that contains hardness must often be softened by lime precipitation this is a this is a method for removal of hardness or ion exchange this is the category if hardness is present Uh, hardness value is between 0 to 75 it is considered at soft 75 to 150 moderate and up to 300 it is hard and greater than 300 very hard so whenever water is very hard it should be made soft by some procedures or some methods
Alkalinity can be defined as a measure of the ability of water to neutralize an acid. Hard alkalinity basically is due to bicarbonates, carbonates and hydroxide and hydroxide compounds present in the water. So alkalinity in water acts as a buffer and usually beneficial because it would tend to prevent quick changes in pH. But again excessive alkalinity and low alkalinity are not good for the systems. So we need some balance and we have to follow the guidelines. Chloride occurs naturally in groundwater, streams and lakes. Chloride ions in drinking water do not cause any harmful effects on public health. But remember, high concentration can cause an unpleasant salty taste and may be dangerous. So chlorides are not usually harmful to people if they are present in normal range. However, the sodium part of the stable salt has been connected to kidney and heart diseases. So standards for public drinking water require chlorine levels that do not exceed 250 mg per liter. And a combined term for all the dissolved solid is known as TDS, total dissolved solid or conductivity. So TDS is basically inorganic salts and small amount of organic matter present in solution that is in dissolved form. So common inorganic salts that can be found in water include calcium, magnesium, potassium and carbonates, nitrates, bicarbonate etc. So water containing TDS concentration below 1000 mg per liter or ppm is usually acceptable. Although acceptability may be vary according to the circumstances living uh, situations. However, water can be classified by the amount of TDS as follows. Fresh water, if TDS is less than 1500 ppm or milligram per liter, then it is called fresh water. If it is 1500 to 5000, then this is brackish water and greater than 5000 and up to 30,000 this is saline and above 30,000 it is considered as sea water. Now the third type is microbial pollutants. So one of the greatest risks to human health is the presence of microbial contaminants in the drinking water. So once the microbes invade the human body they multiply and cause acute or chronic conditions that would be mild to severe as in the present in arena COVID-19 virus is one of the big example when it go inside the human body they multiply and cause uh, problems. So microbial pollutants can be of various types such as bacteria, viruses, protoza and helminins each of which has numerous members exhibiting various varying degrees of pathogenicity. For example, algae. Algae are microscopic plants. You can see from this figure that they are greenish effect. Contain photosynthetic pigments such as chlorophyll. That's why these are water is looking green. Algae are primarily nuisance organism in the water supply because of the taste and odor problems they create. So certain species of algae cause serious environmental and public health. For example, blue green, blue green algae can kill cattle and other domestic animals if the animals drink water containing those species. So this is also harmful. Bacteria are considered to be single celled and in the less than 30 minutes a single bacterial cell can mature and divide into two new cells. So bacteria can produce reproduce so rapidly that a bacterial culture may contain 20 million cells per milliliter after just after one day. A lot of dangerous water borne diseases are caused by bacteria namely typhoid and the so on. So this is the cultural uh, you can say this which shows the uh, bacteria. And last one is viruses. Viruses are the smallest biological structure known to contain all genetic information necessary for their own reproduction. Good example is nowadays COVID-19, coronavirus, coronavirus which causes the COVID-19 disease. Viruses are pesticides that need to host to life. Waterborne viral pathogens are known to cause infectious hepatitis. Most of waterborne viruses can be deactivated by the disinfection processes. 
conducted in water treatment plant. So these are some important you know impurities type of impurities and specifically we discuss one by one uh, in journal so um, which which are uh, must be characterized to find out the actual water quality i hope this video will be again informative and we will present some more detail of uh, water and other treatment processes in the next videos please keep watching and thank you very much for uh, looking these videos and if you like then please like like and subscribe the channel.